You, the men and women of the CIA, are the eyes and ears of the free world. You are the tripwire. CIA is a state-sponsored terrorist association. You don't look at people as human beings. They're, they're nothing but pieces on the chessboard. Secrecy in this work is essential. Achievements and triumphs can seldom be advertised. Shortcomings and failures often are advertised. No one really knows all the things that CIA does. They pretty much have carte blanche and they have an enormous amount of money. You know, maybe I'm overly naive, but I don't see what would be wrong with that. Now we need more intelligence, not less. We must not diminish our intelligence. The CIA is not really an intelligence agency. It's a covert action agency. The CIA has been involved in assassination and torture behind the scenes all through its history. The Cold War is over, but many new dangers have taken its place. The decisive advantage the United States intelligence provides this country is therefore as important as it has ever been. December 1941. The attack on Pearl Harbor sinks the Pacific Fleet. Military intelligence is in shambles. The dawn attack becomes the crucible on which the modern spy culture is born. Into the breach stepped a new generation of American soldiers, the spies and covert warriors of the Office of Strategic Services. They battled the Japanese and Germans behind the lines in an underworld of sabotage and psychological warfare. They trained and fought with local guerrillas in unknown jungles with only one guiding command. Don't get caught. Come closer. I want to talk to you again. I have a more astonishing tale to tell, almost incredible. Shrouded in the mystery of oriental ways, mysterious, sinister, evil little men from Japan. It was a simpler time when the nation's enemies were clear. Washington and Hollywood swept into action, inventing the popular culture that has surrounded espionage for half a century. Swing. The mystery. The adventure. The romance. The simple stereotypes of the enemy. Hello, hide pockets. And the fearless hero. You guys have been looking for a war, haven't you? That's right, Rick. That's why we're starting it. You may start it, Joe, but we'll finish it. We had hoped that our wartime ally, the Soviet Union, would join in the efforts of the whole community of nations to build a peaceful world. Instead, the rulers of the Soviet Union have sought to extend the boundaries of their totalitarian control. The battlefields of the new Cold War seemed uniquely suited to the skills of spies and secret agents. President Truman pledged that the United States would never be caught by surprise again. The Central Intelligence Agency was born. It was considered the Cadillac of government agencies, and they mostly hired from um, Ivy League colleges. The cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. And one path we shall never choose, and that is the path of surrender or submission. The public embraced the cloak of secrecy that the CIA wrapped around itself. The government didn't know I was working for the government. They told me not to tell anyone, not even my mother. I couldn't tell my children. My wife didn't even know what I was doing. Who were these agents? And what were they doing in Guatemala and Iran? How did patriotic Americans from Main Street neighborhoods get caught up in the overthrow of foreign governments? What were they doing in places like Ecuador and Vietnam, where the CIA organized torture and assassination? These are the stories of former agents who dared to break away from the CIA.
I was so disillusioned about my country because I believed it was like my country right or wrong. But my country was wrong so much of the time. I've lost my first class citizenship. I've lost the respect probably of a lot of friends. I've gained a lot of enemies. I think CIA ex-members, somewhat like myself, who leave and tell their stories, it's a very painful process. But I think they are feeling that they're doing a higher duty, if you will. They're not just quitting and leaving and being quiet. They're quitting and expressing their conscience. Here is something that we've done that is terrible, and here's something that must be stopped. I played four years of football at the University of Notre Dame, and we were undefeated for all four years, three national champions, and I was the first team right tackle. So once when I was cut from the Green Bay Packers, I was recruited by the agency, and I kind of wondered why they recruited me. But when I got to the agent, got down to Washington, I found out that most of those in my class were rejects from the National Football League. I went to an interview at the Chicago courthouse by a man who didn't identify himself or the agency that he was recruiting for. And he said that what I would be doing would be involved in fighting communism. 800 million people, one third of mankind, exist under communist tyranny without the God-given rights of freedom and human dignity. Of course, at that particular period in 1952, this was uh, this was so much a part of our, our everyday life, and I said, oh, yes, I very much wanted to be a part of it, very proud to be a part of it. My career in the agency uh, began in 1952, and I stayed in the agency through 1977. In the entire 25 years, I was in the director of operations, or also known as uh, 